I'm Edwin Castellanos, um, and I am an intern here at People's Resource Center. Um, and today we will be discussing Snapchat and Instagram. All right, so Snapchat, so it's something that was recently started up. Um, it's an app that can be used on Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. So you can download them through both, and it's not available online. Um, so it's used to take pictures or videos and send them to your friends. And the unique feature about Snapchat is that it's only used for um, a second to 10 seconds uh, before it disappears. So it's only temporary and it's not permanent. And you can also add them to your story, which it's still not um, permanent. It's only up on your story for 24 hours and then it's deleted. Um, and that's available for your friends to see. And the ones that you send personally are only available for your whoever you send it to to see. All right, so Snapchat was founded by two college students who were studying at Stanford University. Um, they attempted several projects before um, coming upon Snapchat. And it only started, it started only with um, being available for iPhones and the Apple App Store, but then it expanded and was available for Android as well. And people saw this as a unique chance to um, send messages to friends since it was a lot faster than sending text messages or anything like that. So with Snapchat, just like any other social media, there are some concerns that go along with it, um, such as cyberbullying and teenagers who Snapchat is mostly aimed at um, using it for inappropriate content. Um, the thing with it as well is that people can screenshot your picture so they're not um, just temporary as well. So if someone screenshots your picture, they can use it for something else or they have it for themselves now. And something that initially occurred as well was that an app was used called Snap Hacks that allowed you to save the pictures without the person knowing. So instead of just sending it for 10 seconds, some people could continually see it um, and save it to the phone without letting you know or the user know that you screenshot it or you saved it on your phone. Um, so that was initially one of the concerns with privacy that Snapchat uh, had when they began the app. Uh, but now with the updates that they've had, they've been able to fix that and um, the app is, not able, is no longer used for that. Um, so that's something that was updated now recently with Snapchat. Um, so just like any other social media, um, Snapchat is used for marketing as well and by businesses. And one of the reasons why it's used for this is that it's a faster way to reach a lot of people. Um, so a lot of teenagers and a lot of young adults are now using this as social media. Um, so you can use this and it's sort of like a commercial since you can put on your story for people to see for 24 hours. Um, and it's something really quick that you can just take a quick picture of or a video and put it up for everyone to see. Um, something that's not good about it would be that it's only available for people who use phones since it's not on computers or anything like that. Um, so you would have to know whether the people you're targeting are able to reach and use their phones or not. Um, and then another thing is that it's mostly teenagers who use this app as well. So you would have to make sure that that's who you're targeting in a way as well. Alright, so to use the actual app, when you first open it, um, you, something like this comes up. And the two things that appear at the top would be the flash, um, whether you want to take a picture with the flash or not, and whether you want to flip it from the backside camera or the front facing camera. Camera. When you first open it up, um, the default side is the back facing camera, so if you want to take a picture of yourself for a group, then you would have to switch that at the top right corner. Um, okay. So in order to start adding your friends or any people that you would like to send pictures to, um, you would have to add them one of three ways. Um, so if you can see in the picture, you can add them with the QR code, and that's something unique that was just added recently with the recent update. Um, if you have your Snapchat app and someone else has it, then they can pull it up and you simply take a picture of that so you hold it and you automatically add them as well. Um, so that's something that you can use if you meet someone and you want to add them there, and that's a quick, simple way of doing it when um, you're with the person. If you're not with the person, another way to find people, um, say you just download the app and you're trying to find friends or someone to add, is through your contact list. And you can see right there it says my contacts. And when you click on that, it's going to show you a list of your contacts and it's going to show 
who's um, using Snapchat and who's not, and you can invite people who are not on Snapchat um, through their phone number. Um, and then the other way is if you have someone's username, then you can go ahead and enter that where it says add friends, and you send them the friend request. All right. So taking a picture. So in order to take a picture, um, the big circle in the bottom um, is where you press that and then it takes a picture. Um, so it's simple as that and then you know you took the picture once that disappears and now at the bottom um, these four buttons appear or icons. So the first icon that appears is to change the time. So as I mentioned that's something that's unique to Snapchat so you can change it from one second to ten seconds and you just tap on the icon and then the seconds are going to appear. Um, you change it from one to ten seconds, whatever you like and then you press back on the time. The next icon that appears is to save your picture. Um, so if you click on that before sending a picture, then you can go ahead and save it to your gallery. Um, so you have that before you go ahead and send it and lose the picture. Ed Edwin, can yes. I ask you when somebody gets something, does, does it um, like ding on your phone? So yes, yeah, so uh, you and wait. You have to press something to actually view it, and that's when the seconds start. Yes. Yeah, so something that was recently updated as well. Before you would have to press it and hold on to it, mm -hmm. but now you just press it, and then the seconds start counting down. Okay. Um, so you don't have to do anything. It's just on there as well. Okay. So what people do is instead of taking pictures from their phone, now what they do is open up the app, take a picture there, save it, and then they can go ahead and send it out to their friends or put it on their story. So it's a much quicker way of doing that than going on the um, on your phone, taking a picture, and then going on the app and then sending a picture. So you can do both things on once here on the app. Um, you just take the picture, save it, and then go ahead and send it or post it on your story. So it's something really quick for you to do. So adding it to your story, that would be the next icon. Um, even before you send it out to your friends, you can go ahead and post it on your story. Um, and then whatever time you put on there, that's how long it's going to be on your story as well. Um, it's going to be up for 24 hours, but if you put for it to be available for 4 seconds, and when they tap on the picture, they see it for 4 seconds, and then that closes it down. Um, but they can see it multiple times since it is on your story. So it's not just once that they're able to see it. Um, unlike when you send it to your friends and they're only able to see it once for four, those 4 seconds. <clears throat> and this is one of two ways, and then we'll go over the second way to go ahead and do it. Can you explain what your story is? Yes. So... On your story is where, say, you're on vacation and you take several pictures. So you take a picture and you want to post it on your story for everyone to see um, what you're doing on vacation. So you go ahead and post it on your story so that not just one of your friends or two or whoever you want to send it to sees it, but of your friends that you have added. Um, so say you have 100 friends on Snapchat, then if you post it on your story, those 100 friends are able to see it compared to you just sending it to one friend or two. Um, and that's up for 24 hours compared to just being up for those four or five seconds that you send it to a friend. Um, and you can add multiple things on your story as well. It's not just one picture or one video. And then this is what it appears like once you go ahead and add it to your story. Um, so going back from here, if you slide to the right, then you can go ahead and see your story or this will come up. Um, on the top will be your story, so that's where you can see the things that you put on your personal story. And on the bottom will be your friends and what they posted their stories. So you can see your own stories and their stories. And then at the top it shows you, if you see the little eye icon, that tells you the number of views, so how many people have seen it. So if you have um, 100 friends and it shows 60, then 60 of your 100 friends have seen those pictures. So you can keep track of who's seeing your pictures and who's not in a way and the green little icon with an arrow shows who has screenshot of the picture so this is something that shows as well with snapchat so you can keep track of who's saving the picture or who's not um, and if you accidentally post something on your story then you can go back and delete it as well so it's not up once you put it up you can go ahead and take it down um, or if you only want it up for a certain amount of time um, for an hour or two then you can go ahead, <coughs> go ahead go back and then get rid of it delete it um, the way that you do that is when you're on the left side of the picture, you click on whatever story it is. Um, in this case, it would be the one that says Mail Day. And then once it appears on the top right, where you see a little trash can, you click on that and then it deletes it for you. Uh, and this would be the second way to save a picture in your story. So once you have your story, 
<clears throat> on the top right as well, if you see the little arrow icon with the little line underneath, you press on that as well and then that saves it too. So that's the second way for you to save your picture. So on yours, how many people um, have access to it? I'm trying to understand what numbers are up there. Yes. Is that first one, 1538, is that how many people have access to that? On are the you screen? talking or about that, no. this yeah, one right here? One. Yes. So this is the so this and this right here tell you the exact amount of people who've seen your story. Um, so this tells you the amount of views that you had, and this one right here tells you um, how many screenshots you've had. So how many people have actually saved the picture or taken a screenshot to save it? Um, so that's how you can tell as well. All right. And that's what, going back to the app, that's what the app didn't do. Um, that was the privacy concern, that you couldn't really tell who was saving the picture. Say it's something that um, you might not want everyone to have, so, and then they're keeping it without letting you know. So that was a privacy concern, and that's why Snapchat lets you know, or notifies you who is keeping the picture. And then once you have a picture as well, before you put it up on your story, send it to anyone, you can go ahead and add a caption. Um, so this caption, the way you do it is you tap on the picture, and you simply type something. Um, and then you can change the font or the size and align it as well. And you do that by tapping on the top right hand corner on the T. Um, so you go back and then say you change it and um, change the size of the font and align it. And you want to go back to the simple caption, then you would just tap on it again. And then something that's unique to it as well is you can change the color of the words. Say the picture is something white and <clears throat> by default if the color is white, then you might want to change it to black or another color. Then you just tap on the words. <clears throat> and then the, the palette is going to appear and then you can change the color of the words as well. So that's how you can have fun with it and mess around with it in a way when you're posting your pictures as well. And then something else that's unique to it is you can draw or personalize the pictures. Um, so instead of adding a caption, you can go ahead and draw something on it. And it's similar to when you change the color of the word since the palette's going to appear in the top right hand corner. Um, so you draw on the little tool at the, at the top right, you tap on it, and then the colors are going to appear. And then you just use your finger on the screen to write or draw or color anything that you'd like. Um, in this case, just a simple hello, you just do it with your finger and then it's going to appear on there. Um, and then from there, you can add on your story or send it to someone. Um, something else that was added <clears throat> um, by Snapchat was the filters. So when you take a picture, what you can do now is swipe left and right and filters will appear. Three of the filters that are unique to Snapchat are the location, the speed, and the weather. Um, so location, so this goes back to if you're on vacation or if you're somewhere, um, every location now for the most part has a filter. Um, so you're, if you're here in People's Resource Center in Wheaton, then you can put a filter showing that you're in Wheaton and that will appear just as the one in Mahan does for New York. Um, and then the second one, so the speed, is if you're driving or if you're walking or running or biking or anything like that, you can add your speed <clears throat> to show um, how fast you're going, how slow you're going. Um, but this has raised some concerns with Snapchat, with um, young adults or teenagers using it while they're driving, um, pulling out their phones to show how fast they're going, um, their friends or something like that. So that's one of the concerns that Snapchat has is that they're now using it to um, snap someone while they're driving, which can be dangerous while you're on the road. Um, <clears throat> and then the last one would be the weather, which would be um, something simple as showing how hot or how cold it is. Um, and it's the same thing, you just swipe in, depending on the location, it shows your weather. Or if you're just wondering the weather and you don't have a weather app as well, this is a quick, simple way of doing it while you're using Snapchat. Um, so it's a person that took the photo that, ha that has the app ability to indicate where they're at? Yes, so whoever's taking the picture on the app right there on the picture, you can swipe with the filters um, and you can show your location. So if you're here in Wheaton, that's going to show your filter in Wheaton. If you're in vacation in Manhattan, for example, with the picture here, it's going to show the filter in Manhattan. Um, if you're out somewhere, say, in Florida, in Disney, mm -hmm. then Disney has their own filters and that's going to show that you're in Disney. So unless you use the filter, it won't show your location? Yes, yeah, so it doesn't show it unless you show the filter, yes. Okay. So you have to change the settings on your phone as well um, for it to allow your location. So if you don't have that on, then it's not going to show the filters. 
but if you do, then you can go and hit um, swipe it in order to show your location. And some locations, some places have different filters as well, so you can pick um, whichever filter you'd like to use. So do you put on the filter after you take the picture or before you Yes, yeah, so you take a picture and then you're swiping left or right and that's when the filters are going to appear, um, whichever one you'd like, and then the locations will appear with those as well. Mm -hmm. So it's bef after you take the picture and before you send it out to someone. And then this is something, this is one of the reasons why um, young adults or teenagers like using the app. Um, it's something that's unique to Snapchat is you can have um, these lenses. So these lenses are, they can be um, very simple and then they can be very complex and very strange. Um, as you can see, one of the ones in the example um, um, it has hearts in the eyes. So the way that you do this is you put the front facing camera um, to show your face and you hold on your, your face. Um, so you are pressing down on your face and then they're going to appear on the bottom um, of the app. And then in order for you to have that on your face then you just swipe at the bottom and you choose whichever one you like. Um, for example if I want to show this one right here then I um, swipe until I get to that one and then that's going to appear on my face now. So there are several different um, lenses that you can use and this is something that um, teenagers and young adults like to use. And then these you can send to your friends or post on your story as well. So that's something that's unique to Snapchat. Are there any questions with this? Okay. Now to actually send the snaps, so when you have the picture and you took it and you adjusted the time that you'd like to send it out or if you saved it on your phone, um, now the last icon would be to send it. Um, once you press on that icon right here, now you're going to have your list of your friends. So from the list of your friends, you can scroll and you can pick who you'd like to send it to. So in this case, if I want to send it to this friend, then I click on that and that's going to appear at the bottom um, to notify you that that's who you picked and that's who you're sending it to. And if you'd like to send it to multiple, multiple people, then that's where you go ahead and click on two, three, four um, different um, friends and then you can go ahead and send it to them by clicking on the icon, the arrow, and then it goes ahead and send it to them. Um, and then here as well is where you add it to your story, so this would be the second way. Um, along with sending it to your friends, you can go ahead and click on my story and it's going to put it up in your story. So not only can you send it to your friends, but at the same time you can put it up in your story for everyone else to see. And then now Snapchat has something unique as well, which are local stories. So if you're in Chicago or if you're in New York, any of the big cities, they usually have local stories. Um, so in this case, the New York story. So if you're taking a picture, and for the example, the one that picture that we had in the previous slides with Manhattan, um, and there's something, you're at a certain parade or a um, unique event in New York, then you can go ahead and click on the New York local story, and that's going to add it on that story, and everyone in New York at that time has access to it. Um, so it's not just your friends anymore, but anyone in New York who has Snapchat and the local story can go ahead and access that. So that's a quick way to send out something that you want to put out for everyone to see, not just your friends. Now to actually look at the snaps that are being sent to you and not just send out snaps, um, you swipe to the left from the camera and this is what's going to appear. Um, so in the first one, the first picture, you can see you have your list of your friends who have sent you um, the snaps. And whenever they're empty, so it's just the square or the arrow, um, without any shade or filling in, that means that you already opened it. And whenever you see these colors right here, so the blue, the purple, or the red, it means that you have a new snap sent to you. Um, the blue notifies you that you have a message, the purple notifies you that you have a video, and the red one notifies you that you have a picture. Um, so that's how you can um, figure out or differentiate whether you got a message, a picture, or a video. Um, and in order to open them, all you have to do is just press on it, and then it's automatically going to time you down from, say, it's five seconds, and it's going to count down for you, five, four, and then you can see how many seconds you have left. And the only difference is if it's a message, then you're going to have to swipe to the left in order to view the message. So you don't just press on it, you have to swipe to the left. Um, which you can see right here. So once you swipe to the left, as uh, seen in the first picture, um, you're going to have your message on there. Um, so you can, not only can you send pictures or videos to your friends, you can also message them. Um, 
So it kind of has replaced texting in a way for that reason, since not only can you send those pictures, those quick pictures that you um, take, but you can also message any of your friends. Um, and then one of the recent things that was updated on Snapchat was not only can you message now, but you can also video chat and you can send money or any pictures that you saved on your phone, you can go ahead and send it to your friends now. Um, and then those are seen right here in the bottom. So those icons, the first one means if you have a picture saved on your phone that you want to send out to a friend, then you go ahead and click on that and then select your picture and then send it out. So now you don't necessarily have to take the picture there at the moment and then send it out. You can take any pictures, save it on your phone, and then later on send it to your friends um, through the message. Um, the second icon would be to call them. So if um, you and your friends have Snapchat, then you can go ahead and call them through Snapchat. So you don't necessarily have to have a phone line since you can use Snapchat and the, um, the calling um, tool to go ahead and call them. So that's something that's unique to Snapchat. And if you don't just want to call them, but you also want to see them, then you can go ahead and video chat with them, which would be the third icon right here. Um, so you press on that, and they have to press on it as well, and then you can video chat with them. Um, so that's something unique to this as well. You don't have to use, say, an app like Skype or something like that. Now you can go ahead and use Snapchat to do that as well. And the last one would be to send money. So that's something that's unique to Snapchat and a lot of people have utilized in a certain way. Um, so with Snapcash, it's processed by Square. So it's not um, processed by Snapchat. Um, it's a separate um, company doing that for you. So it is safe since it is square and those are the um, that's how you know that it's secure so the way that this is done is when you're on the message you go ahead and type um, $25, $100, $1 whatever you like and whatever friend you are with at the moment typing so in this example Jillian um, if I'm uh, messaging my friend and <clears throat> I need to send them $5 then I go ahead and type on the screen $5 so in this example a dollar and then you go ahead and press the money sign and send it to them. Um, and no one gets to see your credit card information, so it's just Square that has that information as well. Um, and the way that they received it is they have 24 hours to accept it, and the way they accept it as well is going on the message and then accepting and putting their information as well. And that information, again, is being given to Square, not to Snapchat. And in order to use this, you have to be 18 years and older. And if you're younger than that, then you're not able to or not given the option to go ahead and send money. Um, so that's another way that Snapchat is utilizing this and making sure that um, younger people, um, kids or teenagers that are using this are not able to send money or utilize this in a way. So when you um, sign up for Snapchat, yes. they ask you your birthday? Yes, so you have to put how old you are, so your birthday, and then that's how they know whether you're 18 years or younger. How does, uh, when one receives money, where is it received? Yes, so as we see here in the second one, so just as you have to put your information, they're going to have to put their information as well. So they put their information, their um, bank information, and that's going to be sent to them by Square. Um, so it's just as if you're using, for example, PayPal, if you're familiar with that, or any other money exchange um, um, different companies or something like that, then it's similar since it's processed by Square. It's just a simple way that Snapchat has been um, able to use um, to send money. So it's a lot quicker than going on another <coughs> website or another app to do that. Yes. So you're saying they would go to the bank and then say some, their friend sends a dollar, they'd go to the bank and get the dollar? So it's linked to their account. So they have their bank information and it's going to be transferred to their bank. Right. Yes. Not, they don't, they're not able to show their phone and... and uh, and then use a dollar at the grocery store. No, so it's going to be transferred to their bank account. Mm -hmm. So all of this is done through bank accounts. So you put your information, your um, credit card information from your bank, and then they put their information, and that's going to be transferred from bank to bank or um, account to account. Mm -hmm. So the assumption is they put in their bank information once? Yes, so once you put it on there, it's safe through Square, and you don't have to keep on putting it unless you decide to. So what happens if you send money to someone who did not have their banking information? Yes, so then that's going to get lost if they don't do that within 24 hours. So you have to make sure who you're sending to um, is able to do this, otherwise um, it's gone within the 24 hours. So it's similar to when you post it to your story, and that's another way that they keep it safe. Um, within 24 hours, if they don't do it, then it's going to get lost. Um, however, the thing that's um, bad about this is if you send 
five dollars or say instead of putting five dollars you send five hundred dollars by accident then you're not able to get that back since you are sending it to them already um, the only way that you would have to um, that you would be able to argue that back or get that back is through Square so it wouldn't be done through Snapchat it would be done through Square so you have to make sure that when you're sending money you put the right amount or that um, you are trying to do that otherwise you won't be able to get that back so it's um, a little bit um, it's secure but in a way it can be a little bit dangerous if you don't send the right amount or if you type something incorrect at that time okay. so that's why a lot of people have decided not to use it um, but it is there for people who want to use that as a quick way to sending money to someone so it's mostly used like if you and your friends go to dinner and one person pays on their credit card then you yeah, so that, pay them back yeah so that would be a good example so say you owe your friend five dollars for something or you went to the store and you didn't have money with you so you owe them fifteen dollars so a quick way of paying them back is okay I have um, or I forgot my card at home so let me just send it through you by um, snapchat and then you have the money now um, so you don't have to do it there and then um, with cash anymore or you can just go ahead and go on Snapchat and then do it through your bank accounts if you forgot your credit card home or if you have any money with you. So that's a quick way of, um, so that's something that is most, is used most effectively is if you do something like that, just a quick way of paying back somebody. And then the last thing about Snapchat would be something that they added, which is called Discover. Um, since a lot of people now are downloading Snapchat and using it, they now decided to connect it and link it to um, various different companies, media companies. Um, so for example, in this example we have CNN and they can go ahead and post um, daily news articles um, with pictures or videos um, and text um, from anything that's currently going on. Um, and it is refreshed every 24 hours so every day you get something new, a new article from that company. Um, so there's CNN, there's um, the Food Channel, there's Discovery, there's um, ESPN, so there's dif different media companies that go ahead and use this, now utilize this to post something. So <clears throat> if you don't have time to check the news or what's going on, you can go ahead and use this to check um, any articles or anything that's being posted online as well. So you no longer have to go online and look things up. Um, there are articles that are posted on here, and the way that you view them is <clears throat> when you go to your story, they're right below your story. Um, so you can click on those, the ones that are shown and displayed there, and you can see that. Or if you want more to be displayed, as we see in the second image, then you have to click on the top right, um, the little purple circle that appears, and then you get all of the different media channels that are used. Um, so you get all 22 once you click on the purple one and you can see them. And they each have um, several stories that you can see. Um, so you can scroll through them. And if you find one that you find interesting or you want to learn more about, then you just scroll up and then you can read the full article or see the video or anything like that that they put up. But it's gone after 24 hours. Yeah, so that's updated every 24 hours. So it's current. Um, it's not something that's like from a month ago. It's something that's um, up to date and current to that day. So Instagram. Um, so Instagram is very similar to Snapchat. Um, but the way that it differs now is that Instagram is um, more permanent. So the pictures that you put up are seen as a highlight of your pictures, a highlight of um, your life and what you've done, and your best pictures. So you can actually share these on any other social media as well, Facebook, Twitter, um, for example, um, unlike Snapchat. So Snapchat is just posted on Snapchat and you can share it outside of that. But with Instagram, you're able or given the option to share outside of Instagram to your Facebook account, Twitter account, Tumblr account, um, for example. Um, and it is able to be seen permanently. So if you put it up, it's not just for 24 hours um, compared to Snapchat. You're able to see it for as long as you keep it on there. Um, so once you post it, it's up there for everyone to see, um, anyone who's your friend on Instagram. Now, Instagram was started by Kevin and Mike in 2010, and it was bought out in 2012 by Facebook. <clears throat> so there was a lot of changes that came up with that, and one of them was um, initially it was just an app available for phones, um, just like Snapchat. But after that, it grew once around the time that Facebook bought it, and it was carried out to um, an online website as well. Um, however, Instagram is still best utilized once you have it on your phone as an app. Um, and it is being 
it is able to be used by both Android phones and um, iPhones. And similar to Snapchat, the privacy concerns are still there. Um, cyberbullying and it being used for inappropriate content. The only thing that might be different is that if you don't have your account on private, that anyone who has an Instagram account can access your account and see your pictures. So if they see a picture, they can go ahead and take that picture and you have, you're not aware of that. Um, so if you don't have your account on private, um, I can go ahead and access your account and you can go ahead and access anyone's account and see what they're posting on there. But the moment that you set it as a private account, then only the people who are your followers are able to access that account. So you keep that um, to whoever you've allowed access to those pictures. And then you can go ahead at any moment and go ahead and change that setting as well. Um, from private account to um, being able to be seen by everyone. Now to make an account, once you download the app, um, this is what first comes up. If you have a Facebook account, then you can go ahead and link it to your Facebook account as it appears right there. So right away it gives you your Facebook account if you have one or you have to put your information. Um, and another one of two ways would be putting your phone number or connecting it to your email. Um, so just like any other app that you use on your phone, you usually put your email, your phone number, and then that's how you get started with Instagram as well. Um, once you set up your account, once you created it, then what you can do is start following people to see what they're putting up, what pictures are being posted. Um, and there are three ways that you can follow people once you create your account, and that's people who are in your contacts. So you can search your contacts similar to Snapchat, and it allows you to see who has an Instagram account from your contacts. So if you put your phone number, people are going to see that you made an Instagram account, just as you can see that they have an Instagram account as well. Um, another way would be if you connect it to your Facebook, then you can see who from your Facebook friends um, has an Instagram account. So you can link it from your Facebook account to your Instagram account. And then another way is <clears throat> Instagram recommends several people. Um, for example, you have um, a famous um, basketball player, um, Taylor Swift, a famous singer, and something like an event, NBC Olympics. So you have several different accounts that you can follow to see what pictures are being posted on there. Um, if you don't decide to follow your friends or just to follow additional accounts. Um, once you start following people and you create your account, um, your home feed is going to look something like that. So there are different icons that appear at the bottom and we'll go over those, but the first one that appears, the little house, is your home feed. So once you follow someone, um, this is where you can scroll and you can see different pictures that are being posted at the time. Um, so the ones all the way at the top who appear first um, for example, say I open the app and this is the one that comes up first, um, that's the most recent one that was posted. And as you start scrolling down, um, then you'll start going back um, hours or days, um, for example. Um, so this is something that would appear. And when you have a picture like this, you can go ahead and like it, comment, or share it to your friends. Um, the first icon that appears on the picture below the picture, if you see you have a heart, and then that heart is to like a picture. Um, so similar to Facebook with the thumbs up, um, Instagram uses a heart, so if you press on the heart, then that means that you like the picture. Um, so the number will go up, the number of likes. <clears throat> and then the comments, so if you want to comment something on the picture, um, say your friend uh, posted a picture of a vacation or something, and you want to comment something on there, you go ahead and press on the little bubble, so next to the heart, and comment anything, and go ahead and comment that on the picture. And then the last one that we see, um, the little arrow, is if you see a picture and you want to share it to someone, um, then you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so any of your friends or anyone that you have on Instagram. Um, so when you have the picture, you can like, comment, and share. So the next one that comes up, the next icon at the bottom would be um, to search um, and see what's recommended for you. Um, so when you initially click on it, um, something to the picture you see on the left is going to come up. And that's what's recommended for you. Um, so based on what's currently going on, um, your, the people you follow and the people who follow you, certain pictures will come up and you can see those. Um, but if you're not interested in those but you're trying to find, say, a new friend or um, a new location, a new hashtag or anything like that, then you can go ahead and click on the top where it says search and type in anything. Um, for example, if I want to look at pictures that were taken here at People's Resource Center, I can go ahead and go to the top and put People's Resource Center and then enter that and then pictures, for example, as you see right here, of People's Resource Centers would come up. So anyone that tagged People's Resource Center um, 
then you can go ahead and see the picture on there. Or if you want to look up a friend, um, if you have their name, for example, um, say their name Ruby, then you go ahead and type Ruby, and then um, people named Ruby will come up. Um, but if you have their exact username, then you can put that in there, and then their account will come up, and you can follow them. So that's a way to find friends or pictures or um, any hashtags that you know. Um, so there's also an event. Um, you see a lot of those recently now. Um, if you go to an event and there's a hashtag, you can go ahead and look that up on Instagram and you can see what people are posting of the, the, that event. Or if you post a picture, then you can go ahead and put the hashtag and that's going to appear on there. Um, so the next one, so the next icon would be the little camera and that's to post a picture. And when you click on that, this is going to appear. Um, so there are three options when you click on that to post a picture or a video. And the first way that you can do it is through your gallery. So you can look through pictures that you have saved on your phone um, to see what you would like to post. And the second would be if you want to take a picture there and then, then you can go ahead and do that as well and then post that picture that you're taking in the moment. And then the last one would be if you have a video, then you're going to record that and then put that up as well. Um, once you select, so for this example, say we select the picture right there that's being displayed. Um, then you click on the arrow and that's going to take you to the next step in order to post a picture. So this would be your second um, step and it's whether you want to edit the picture or not. Um, so there are certain filters that will appear at the bottom left if you see um, it says filter and you can scroll through the filters that are given. Um, if you would like to keep the picture as it is without a filter, um, you can also edit the picture. Um, you can edit the brightness, um, <clears throat> saturation contrast for example and the structure of the picture. Um, if, you wouldn't, if you don't want to edit the picture or put a filter on it then you go ahead and go to the next um, step which would be the arrow once again in the top right hand corner. The final step to post then in this case once you select every picture and you edit it if you wanted to or added a filter to it um, would be if you want to tag a person say you took a picture um, with a friend, family member and they also have an Instagram account. Um, so in that case what you do is you go ahead and press tag people and you select whoever you want to tag on that picture. Um, so if you want to tag a friend then you click on their face and then you tag their account. So if their name is Ruby, um, going back to that, then you can go ahead and tag Ruby and then her account will be linked to that picture. Um, so other people can see that she has an account and go ahead and follow her account. Um, you can also add a location, so similar to Snapchat. If you took a picture when you were on vacation or if you took a picture at an event here at People's Research Center per se, um, then you can go ahead and add the location so that when people search something and they search People's Research Center or they search Manhattan, New York, then that picture will come up the one that you took if you want if you want it to be displayed. And the last one would be sharing it um, as I commented before on different social media sites. So you can share it on Facebook, Twitter, um, through email, Tumblr, for example. Um, so there are different various social media sites that you can share on depending on what you're using at the moment. Um, and once you've done that as well, then you can go ahead and send the picture and upload it. Um, another thing that's given with that, if you don't just want to upload it but send it to certain people, you can also do that. So similar to Snapchat, if you don't want to send it to or display it to everyone um, who is your follower, then you can choose direct. So at the top, instead of putting followers, you click on direct and you pick who you want to send it to. And we'll go ahead to the next one. Um, so for example, I took this picture and I want to send it to three of my friends. So I click on those names and I go ahead and send it to them. So now they're the ones that can view the picture. So I send a personal message to them with a picture and whatever I wrote instead of displaying it for all of my followers. So that's another option that's given um, on Instagram instead of posting it all um, for all your followers to see. And you can also um, send the messages on that. So once you send a picture, you go ahead and send them an image. So on this, for example, um, just arriving at the airport, so you can tell them, I'll be there soon, and then they can tell you, um, so how long is it going to take, what time are you going to be here, where should we meet you, and then you can start a conversation there. So you don't have to text anymore as well. This is another option for you if you're on Instagram. You can go ahead and just send them a, a message on Instagram instead of texting them. So going back and forth from Instagram to your texting, 
you can just go ahead and do all of that on Instagram. Um, so the third icon at the bottom would be your newsfeed. Um, so in your newsfeed is where you can see um, what your friends are doing, um, your friends and your followers. So people who follow you, you can go ahead and click on following and you can see what they're liking um, to get an idea. Say you have a friend and they're liking pictures of another friend and you didn't have them um, as a friend. Then you can go ahead and um, click on their account and go ahead and follow them or see the picture that they're liking. Um, so that's another way that you can see what other friends are doing, follow more people, and have more people follow you as well. Um, once you click on news on the other one at the top right hand corner, instead of the following, the news now will display what your followers are doing. Um, so if they like the picture, that's where it's going to tell you um, this person liked your picture or this person commented on your picture, um, for example, or this person shared your picture. So anything like that, that's where you would see it. So on the newsfeed icon, that's where you would see um, actions of your followers and the people that you follow. So this would be the equivalent of on Snapchat on your story, um, it's telling you who's looking at your pictures, who's um, screenshotting them, for example. This is where you can keep track of who's liking your picture, commenting on your pictures, and um, such, such things. Um, the last one would be your personal profile. Um, <clears throat> so the little icon at the bottom right, the last one would be your personal profile. So this would be my personal profile. Um, and then this is where you can see when you go to yours or to someone's profile, you can see how many followers they have and how many they're following as well. Um, if you want to edit something about it, if you want to change your name, your personal account name, or if you want to link it to a website, or if you want to write a different bio by yourself, then this is where you would do it. So you would click on edit profile and this is what would appear and then this is where you can change it. Um, so something that's unique to Instagram now as well and how different companies are using it, um, say it's a different store, for example, um, Nike or Adidas, um, if they have an Instagram account, they can say if they have a new product that came out, they can go ahead and link it to their website directly and then you can go ahead and buy the product. So if you have a blog um, or something like that and you want people to uh, go to your blog um, once they go to their Instagram account then you go ahead and link your website and then it's going to appear so right below your bio your website would appear so then they click on that it's going to link them to your blog or website or anything like that um, so that's a quick and easy way for people who are on your Instagram account to visit your website um, and then another thing would be if you change your email or your phone number then this is where you would do it as well and if you change your email or your phone number Instagram will send you um, a PIN number which you have to enter just to verify that it is your phone number. So once you're at your personal profile, if you click on the location arrow right here, it's going to take you to this right here, um, which would be your photo map. So once you take pictures and you link it, say, People's Research Center or I'm in um, New York or I'm in Florida, then this map is going to appear. And with this map, it's going to show the map. Um, and this one, it's a local map since all the pictures have been locally. Um, and it's going to show where you've been, um, what locations you've been to and where you've taken your pictures. Um, so say I happen to go to Starbucks and take a picture there and tag Starbucks. Then it's going to show um, the Starbucks and my picture. If I went to um, Europe and I traveled to France, it's going to show France and it's going to show the picture that I took there. If I'm here in People's Resource Center, it's going to show People's Resource Center on the map and the picture that I took there. So it's a quick and unique way for people to see um, where you've been to, where you've taken your pictures, and then for them to access it depending on your location. So other people can see that map? Yes. So whenever you, yes. So if I'm on my profile, I can see that. Or if I go to someone else's profile, I can go ahead and do the same. So whenever I go to someone's profile, um, the only thing that would be different is the edit your profile um, button right there is not going to appear in whoever's profile you're visiting but it will be the same thing um, so you can do is click on the same thing the location arrow and that's going to show you their personal map so for whatever account you want to visit um, whether it's a family member or a friend you can go ahead and click on that and it's going to show you the pictures on the photo map um, so if they live in California it's going to show you the pictures they're taken in California for example um, and in what location in California.
so you can see that. Can you also block, um, let's say you have a friend, mm -hmm. and then later you decide you want to block that friend? Yes, so that would be the same thing. So if you go to their profile, um, they usually have this right here at the top, and when you click on that, it's going to give you the option of block or whoever you're trying to, yes. Um, or if you're just trying to unfollow them, the simple way is when you go to their account, instead of showing the edit your profile, it's going to show that you're following them, and you just click on that, and then you unfollow them. Yes, so you have those two options. So whether you just want to unfollow them or if they've been posting something inappropriate in your account, for example, then you can go ahead and block them so they stop posting that in your account. Okay, so the last one right here in your profile would be, or in anyone's profile, this is fourth icon, and that's pictures that people have taken or tagged a view. So in this example, um, on this account, so these are the pictures that friends or different accounts have taken and tagged them in. Um, so this is not only on yours but on everyone else's so if you visit a friend family member same thing you can go ahead and click on that and it's going to show you um, pictures that were taken of them um, so if I went to on a trip with friends and family members to um, South America for example and they took pictures they went ahead and put it on their Instagram account and I would like to see that picture um, then I can go ahead and go to photos of me or photos of you or whoever it is and then you can see pictures that were taken of that person. Um, so that's a quick and easy way for you to see what other people are posting of your friends, family members, or yourself. And it will go ahead and notify you when a picture is taken. And say you took a picture and it's posted on here, you can go ahead and get rid of it and say that you don't want that tagged um, on here for it to appear. It's something, say, inappropriate, an account tagged you in and it's inappropriate, then you go ahead and untag yourself so it's not on there anymore. So similar to Facebook, something that more people are familiar with, um, you can untag yourself from pictures and any posts or anything like that. So are there any questions about Snapchat or Instagram, uh, about anything that we covered? Uh, with Snapchat, can you also block someone? Yes, so, so what's unique to Snapchat is that when you're on Snapchat, um, people, you can choose for your friends to send you Snapchats or anyone. Um, so usually what happens on Snapchat is only your friends are able to send you things or you're only able to send them to your friends. Um, so you usually don't have to worry about that since it's only people that you want to be friends with that you're adding, not just anyone. Like on Instagram that it's open to anyone if you don't put it private. Um, Snapchat, there's no way for people to just add you um, unless they have your username, phone number, or the QR code. Um, so it is a little bit more private than Instagram, for example, where Instagram, they can just search up your name and it's going to appear. Um, so Instagram, anyone can look up anything, kind of like Facebook as well, for example, or Twitter or anything like that, and your account appears. But on Snapchat, it's mostly um, whether you've given your username, whether they have your phone number, or whether they have your QR code, which only happens when you're with them at the moment in time. So you don't have to worry about that as much as with Instagram. But that is an option as well. If you know their account, then you can go ahead and block them. So when you go on Instagram, it's going to appear, so my account is already linked on here. So I'm just going to log in as my account. And the first thing that's going to appear is my home feed. So similar to when you open up your um, account, your app on your phone, um, your home feed is the first thing that appears. Um, so here's where I can see what people that I follow are posting on here. So I can go through this and see different pictures that people that I follow are putting on here. Um, and then say I want to comment on this picture then I go ahead and do that or go ahead and like the picture so it's similar to the using it on your phone so that you can still like it and you can still comment on it or you can go ahead and share it as well by clicking here um, so that's your home feed so it's similar to using it on your phone the next one would be so these are people that are recommended for you um, so based upon the people that I follow these are people that are recommended for me. Um, so say I want to um, see who this person is, maybe it's a friend of mine that I don't follow at the moment, then I can go ahead and add them or follow them at the time. So if I want to follow them, so similar to what I was telling you, I can go ahead and follow. And if I don't want to follow them anymore, then I can just go ahead and unfollow. So that's how you do that. And then if you want to block them, then you go ahead and click on the little bubble right here and then block the user so they don't use it anymore. 
So I'll go ahead and choose that. And then the next one would be, so this one's different than using it on your app on your phone. Since instead of um, this displaying different little slide, this one just appears as a pop-up. And then here you can see who's liked your pictures or commented or started following you. Um, and then the last one would be your personal profile. Um, and then here you can see your pictures. And then if you want to see what people commented on these, you have to click on it. And then you can see what people are putting on here. And I'll say a comment was inappropriate, for example. Say I want to get rid of something. Um, so I can just go ahead and delete the comment. And now it's not on my picture anymore. And then you can keep track of what people are saying and then if you want to change anything about it. So same thing if you want to edit your profile, go edit your profile and then you can change anything about it. And another thing I didn't show was you can see who your followers are or who you're following. Um, so say you want to see who's following you, then you go ahead and click on here and you see all the different accounts of people who are following you. And then it also tells you whether you're following them or not. Um, so it shows if you're following them, then it's going to go ahead and tell you. And if it's if you're not, then it's going to give you the option to follow them back. And then instead of having the different icon, so it doesn't have an icon to share, um, search up anyone or search up any hashtags. So what's different um, for the online version would be you have to click up top and then search anything. So for example, So People's Resource Center, and then I have the location, and then I have the hashtag. So if I click on the location, People's Resource Center, as I was telling you, the map will display where People's Resource Center is, and pictures that people have taken here at People's Resource Center. And I can go ahead and click on any, so I want to click on this one. And it tells me who took the picture, so the Northern um, Food Bank. I can go ahead and comment on the picture, whatever I'd like. I can go ahead and like the picture. Um, and I can go ahead and follow their account if I'm not following at the moment. And then if I posted a picture with People's Resource Center on there, then it will display here. Um, so you can you can do that, search up a location. You can also look up anyone as well. Um, say I want to look up someone, then that's going to appear. And I can go through there. Profile. The only thing that's different with the online version compared to your phone is that you're not able to post pictures or videos or anything on the online version. Um, you're just able to see your account and other people's accounts, but you're not able to go ahead and um, post your own pictures online. Um, and then this one right here, so this one has a link, and I can go ahead and click on it, and it's going to take me to so. This is a store, so it's going to take me to a store or online website to buy whatever they're selling, for example. Are there any questions about the using it online? All right. All right, well, thank you for being here. <laughs>